Alligator Feeding Show. I'm Jimmy LB conducting it for you. All right. So before we get started, do have some rules to go over with you guys. Make sure you guys are safe. The animals are safe and everything like that. Um, before we get started with the show, so just no kids on shoulders because we don't want anyone falling in here, especially during feeding time. Um, so it is feeding time. Obviously, they're hungry. Um, any splash in the water, they're going to treat it like it's food, um, whether that be a hat or a piece of garbage um, or a person. So that's definitely not um, something we like. Um, try not to keep your uh, or try to try to. Uh, Throw your garbage away in the trash can. Try not throwing any in the enclosures, anything like that, any hot dogs or any human food. Um, we like to feed them um, a strict diet of just the cricket, church, ah, sorry, chicken and crock chow um, is what I got for them here today. Um, so those, those little biscuits I'm throwing out for them, you guys can check out as well. All right, so before we get started, I think all the, uh, the big boys over there are all... Oh, no, we got one big one right here. So usually the bigger ones are going to be the ones jumping out of the water, the ones slamming those jaws shut, so that would be uh, making a, a pretty loud noise um, with that big jaw there. So hopefully you guys can check that out. Hopefully these guys aren't too lethargic today as getting towards the end of the feeding season. Um, but we are ready to start, I believe. You guys uh, you guys ready to see some alligators eat? Yeah. yeah. All right, sweet. Let's get started here. So let's see. This guy usually is jumping. Let's see how he's feeling today. Oh, no. All right. So this is the American alligator. Uh, so the American alligator is the second largest reptile in North America, right behind the American crocodile. So they are pretty similar. Um, but the American crocodile gets a little bit longer, so about a foot longer on average. You're going to see those males getting up to about 16 foot tops. Um, and these uh, American alligators, they'll get around 15 foot tops. So they're not going to get nearly as big um, as their crocodile cousins. Um, but they do get pretty big nonetheless. They have some pretty chunky ones over there you might see. A lot of the time they're going to be storing a lot of their fat in that tail. So that's where they're going to be storing a lot of it for the winter time. Um, is in that nice tail there. You might see those real big guys. Um, they have those real chubby cheeks. Um, and also that really, really thick tail. So that's definitely a good sign, especially this time of year. Um, it's gonna be cooling down, um, and these guys definitely um, are gonna wanna be conserving as much energy as possible. That's why they might seem a little lethargic today. In the summertime, they're usually all jumping out of the water. A lot of times, simultaneously, they might be jumping out um, all at the same time, um, and they're just very active because they have that sun, um, that heat to kind of build up that um, energy, that metabolism is, is going a little bit faster. Um, so these guys are definitely um, starting to slow down a bit, and that's why it's important that we feed them um, as much as we can, especially spot feeding the smaller ones, um, those skinnier gators. We actually got a shipment of uh, beef hearts not too long ago, um, which was good for these guys. Organ meats are, are very good for them. They have a lot of nutrients. Um, you can't just feed them like steaks. Um, and, uh, and stuff like that, like, like we like to eat, or a lot of mammals will just eat. Um, they need that organs, they need all those vital nutrients because they have so many variables going on there. They've got that thick skin, that really thick hide. Let's see if we can jump out of this guy. There we go. So they have that really thick hide. They've also got all those teeth in there. That, those teeth are made of calcium, um, and also those osteoderms on their back there have a lot of calcium involved in those. So we need to make sure that they get enough calcium, and that's why these biscuits are so important for these guys. Um, it's a good supplement um, for organ meat. It makes sure that they get all those nutrients so their teeth are growing in properly. And what will happen a lot of the times, if you get an alligator or a crocodile that's really old, um, he might start struggling with those teeth. He might have a hard time growing those teeth in. Um, and a good example of that is Gramps. So we have Gramps over at Croc Cove. He's a more or less crocodile. So Gramps um, over there, he's about 80 years old. So he's a very old guy. Um, he's actually not really um, having too much teeth growth. Um, so he's actually got a couple of molars growing in, and that's just because we feed him such a high dot, or a high uh, calcium, nice one, nice calcium diet uh, for him. So he can constantly be growing in those teeth, um, which is definitely good for him. Um, he's actually, um, a, he's quite an old guy, but he's still got some spunk in him. He still moves around pretty good. Um, whenever I go there to clean his little, uh, his little drain, uh, whenever I go in there to clean his little drain, he's definitely quick to turn around and, and try to grab those little tongs I got for him. So he's definitely still got some spunk in him, um, but even he's starting to slow down here a little bit uh, towards the, uh, the winter time. Um, so Utan over there, the big guy we got, if you haven't checked him out, definitely go check him out. He is definitely um, something to see. Um, he is a hybrid. He's a mix between a Siamese crocodile um, and a saltwater crocodile. So he is very cool. Um, he's actually unique um, in that he's from Thailand. So Thailand, they have a, a zoo there that kind of breeds the, uh, the saltwaters and the, and the Siameses in the same enclosure. So you're going to get those babies um, kind of coming out. Um, and they're definitely um, very large. They actually don't really ever stop growing. So those bigger crocodiles, those, those hybrids, they don't really stop growing. Um, they're constantly going to be getting bigger. Utan up on the front there, um, he's actually... 
a, a lot of times he'll actually continue growing centimeter after centimeter um, later into the year, uh, but he's not getting too much bigger. He's old now, um, so he's not going to get too much bigger than that. But they grow a lot when they're younger. As they, as they age, they taper off a little bit, and those hybrids actually don't really have too big of a genetic potential, um, so they'll actually keep on growing, which is a pretty inter interesting thing about them. Uh, but that won't happen naturally out there in the wild. You're not going to see that too much. Um, is those uh, those hybrids? You know, a lot of times you'll see the uh, the Nile crocodile looks very similar to the saltwater crocodile, uh, but you won't see any any Nile hybrids really, um, just because the Nile the Nile crocodile is one of the only crocodiles over there um, in its area of, of eastern Africa. Let's try to get this guy here. All right. All right. So these guys, they range actually all the way up to northern North Carolina, southern Virginia, even in some areas, um, you'll find them. Um, and that's definitely pretty cool. They can actually survive up in the winters up there. So in the wintertime, when the water starts freezing, it'll actually get really cold. They might poke their nose um, above the water surface when they feel it's about to freeze. And what will happen is they'll kind of sit there. They'll wait for that water to freeze over, and they'll just kind of rest. They'll kind of float up on top there, um, relying on that ice to hold up their nose. And once that ice melts, they'll drop down a little bit. It'll wake them up. And then they'll actually be okay um, as long as that water's a little bit, um, a little bit warmer. So they can't survive those temperatures for very long. Um, that's why you won't find them as far north as like areas like Chicago, Michigan, um, New York, and stuff like that. It just gets a little bit too cold for too long. Um, but northern North Carolina, southern Virginia is just right for them. Um, they can actually withstand those temperatures pretty good. Um, then of course you got them down in southern Florida as well. Um, this is actually my last piece of chicken here. There we go. All right. Actually, I got one little. Handful of crock chow. Try to get one more jumper for these guys. There's that big boy. Maybe they're just don't be noticed. Come on, buddy. He's thinking about it. It's funny. This one has he's got these two little teeth protruding out of the bottom jaw here, um, up in the front. It's pretty cool because we've actually got babies back in the hospital there that actually have that same little indicator there. So it reminds, or it just makes me think um, that he's probably their father, which is pretty cool. Um, they've got the similar little mannerisms about them. Um, then there's also other ones that, that have uh, similar resemblances um, of their parents that you might see the real big ones in here. Let's see if this guy's ready to go here. All right. All right, so that does conclude the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for coming out. There will be another reptile show um, over at 2 o'clock at the amphitheater if you haven't seen that one yet, but feel free to join that. But thank you guys for coming out. You guys are an awesome crowd. Thank you.